the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka plans to broaden its price regulation policies, which are currently restricted to buses, to encompass a wider range of vehicles. Top blue chip John Kills Holding PLC announces its biggest ever rights issue of 24 billion rupees to support the project funding requirement at its subsidiary Waterfront Properties Limited. The stock market experiences its fifth consecutive day of losses, showing no sign of recovery and bringing negativity to investors. And Standard Chartered unveils 1.5 billion share buyback, boosting 2024 income forecast amid strong Asian market growth. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Transport Minister Bandulu Gunavardhana said that Sri Lanka will expand price regulation, which is currently limited to buses, into tri shows, school vans, and office buses. The cabinet this week has approved changes to the governing law of the National Transport Commission to allow it to regulate prices of three wheelers, office vans, and school vans. Public outcry to control prices of three-wheelers and school vans went up after the central bank denied monetary stability in the prices of printing money for flexible inflation targeting and potential output targeting, eventually triggering a massive fall in the rupee. There have been earlier attempts to set up a three-wheeler regulatory agency when existing drivers also called to stop new entrants coming in. However, three-wheeler imports are not banned and with an economic recovery underway, demand for hires is coming back. Classical economists note that government interference into the economy rapidly expands, like ratchet, when there are wars or economic crises triggered by central banks. Meanwhile, Litro Gas Lanka has announced that it will not revise the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders for the month of August. This statement was made by the company's chairman, Murita Piris. A cabinet statement announced that Sri Lanka will amend the Port City Economic Commission Act No. 11 of 2021. This amendment aims to transform the special economic zone into a globally competitive and specialised economic hub. It stated that the Act needed to be amended in order to enable the maximization and the feasibility of the port city as a globally competitive, specialized economic zone. The changes are meant to eliminate existing obstructions for commencement of business operations as shown by the investors. Most of the regulations that govern the special economic zone are already in place, allowing a number of businesses to start operations. Several businesses, including software firms which were approved to be operated from the port city, are running at designated locations, pending the construction of buildings. The Colombo Port City is to be a dollarized special economic zone. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved the proposal by the President in his capacity as Minister of Investment Promotion to instruct the legal draftsman to prepare a bill for the amendment of the Act. Tails and local partner Just In Time Technologies have awarded the contract to supply Sri Lanka's biometric passports, which are planned for a rollout next year. The first batch of 100,000 chip based passports are scheduled for delivery by Thales by July of 2025, with an agreement to supply 1 million passports annually over five years. A previous government statement suggested the first biometric passports would be ready for issuance in January. The Minister of Public Security will submit a cabinet paper to procure the co developed public key infrastructure and propose personalizing passports using their system on a fee per passport basis. This change would incur additional fees for the new personalization services from the consortium. The transition has brought new challenges to the Department of Immigration and Immigration of Sri Lanka, which has introduced a mandatory prior online registration for new passport applications to reduce congestion at the head office. However, this new appointment system has decreased the daily issuance of the legacy machine readable passports from 3,000 to 800, leading to a potential revenue loss of approximately 13.2 million US dollars. 
Colombo Port's West Container Terminal, backed by India's Adani and Sri Lanka's John Keels, expects to start operations in early 2025. JKA Chairman Krishan Balendra told shareholders in interim accounts that the first batch of key and yard cranes are expected to arrive next month. Commissioning and automation is expected to be completed in the following months. The first phase of the terminal is expected to be operational in the first quarter of 2025. Profits at JK Asia's South Asia Gateway Terminals also increased with double-digit growth coming from both local and transshipment volumes. Sri Lanka's Colombo port has seen volumes rise in the first quarter in particular due to Red Sea troubles and recovering imports. A delegation from CPA Australia, a global accounting body, met with government professional bodies, universities and bank institutions in Sri Lanka to discuss further collaborations. Professor Dale Pinto, Global President and Chair of the Board at CPA Australia, said that Sri Lanka is home to a wealth of experienced professionals and promising young talent pursuing careers in accounting and finance. The delegation met with President Ranavu Kumasinghe and had discussed with local government officials, regulatory bodies, employers and educational and banking institutions. Let's go for a short break. Updates from the stock market right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange marked its fifth consecutive session of losses today, with both All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index ending in the red. To provide a detailed summary of today's market performance, let's connect with Capital Alliance Securities. The Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note compared to the previous trading session dragged down after the announcement of a rights issue of 24 billion rupees by Sri Lanka's top conglomerate John Keith Holding PLC. The market closed at 11,406 points, marking a 104 point decrease from the previous session. However, the turnover for the day was at 3.9 billion rupees due to a foreign crossing of overseas realty PLC, which was recorded at 2.9 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a decline, dropping 66 points to the end of day 3,267 points. Institutional engagement was subdued with market activity primarily driven by retail investors across various sectors. The top turnovers were recorded in John Keyes Hotels PLC, Hatton National Bank and Deep Products. The top five gainers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Industrial Loss Fall, Asia Asset Finance, Eastern Merchants and Exterminators. The top five losers for the day were Blue Diamonds, Non-Voting and Voting, Mercantile Shipping, John Keyes Holdings and Fortland. Following the bond auction yesterday, the central bank hosted its weekly bill auction today. To provide us with the detailed insights and outcomes of this auction and how it would impact the secondary market, let's now go to Zahima Jihan who is joining us from First Capital Holdings. At the weekly T-bill auction today, uh, weighted average yield rates closed uh, at the same levels as last week after three consecutive sessions of declines. Uh, so CBSL only accepted LKR 126.4 billion from the total offered amount of LKR 170 billion. However, a uh, three-month bill saw an oversubscription, while uh, both six-month and one-year bills were undersubscribed. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the secondary market activities have been uh, subdued over the week as investors took the sidelines, awaiting the outcome of the bond auction uh, which took place yesterday. And uh, during today's session also, the lacklustre sentiment persisted, uh, but there was a slight buying interest on uh, yesterday's auction maturity, which is 15-10-2030. Uh, 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 for this week ending, uh, 2nd August, uh, Central Bank has LKR 367.6 billion worth maturities to settle, uh, which is including bills, bonds and coupon interest while uh, LKR 269.6 billion has been raised from primary auctions during the week. Uh, so with this, we can expect liquidity in the system to improve 
uh, given the excess that is generated through maturity settlements. On the other hand, we saw AWPR decrease by 31 basis points uh, to 8.81% uh, compared to the previous week. Uh, meanwhile, AWLR as at June uh, also recorded a decline of uh, 34 basis points closing at 12.47% uh, further narrowing the spread between uh, the prime lending rate and the lending rate. We believe there is uh, room uh, for this spread to further narrow down and lead uh, demand for credit. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today, encouraged by a softer dollar as traders awaited more cues on interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. Spot gold rose 0.3% to $2,419.11 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.5% to $2,463.85 an ounce. The yellow metal also benefited from some safe haven buying after the reported killing of Hamas leader by an Israeli strike in Iran pointed to a potential escalation in the war. The central bank is widely expected to keep rates steady. Oil prices rose sharply today, climbing back from recent multi-week lows. Brent crude futures for September delivered jumped 1% to $79.45 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures climbed 1.2% to $75.64 per barrel. The gains came as industry data showed a fifth straight week of sizable drawdowns in U.S. crude inventories, a sign of a tightening market in the the world's largest fuel consumer. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the US dollar today compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has reduced from 298 rupees and 9 cents to 297 rupees and 85 cents, while the selling rate has also dropped from 307 rupees and 39 cents to 307 rupees and 17 cents. Let's check the rates of the rupee against the other global currencies now. A short commercial break now, let's have a look at the corporate world right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lanka's John Keels Holding said it will be offering more than 150 million shares to existing shareholders at 160 rupees per share to raise 24 billion rupees. The proceeds of the rights issues will be used to fund the City of Dream Sri Lanka integrated resort previously called Cinnamon Life, built by Waterfront Properties Limited. JKH said in a stock exchange filing that the proceeds will support the company's financing obligations, which has increased due to the higher than anticipated equity funding requirement of the project required to bridge the impacts of the delayed cash flow generation from operations due to the deferment of the commencement date, including the gaming operations. The capital raising will result in strengthening the balance sheet of the company by reducing its levels of leverage, providing the company greater flexibility in its future investments. The new shares will be issued in the proportion of one for every ten existing shares. The company is Sri Lanka's largest conglomerate listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange. John Keels Holdings also recently announced its latest financial performance for the first quarter of 2024-2025. Group earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization in the first quarter of 2024-2025 to recorded a decrease of 13% against the corresponding period of the previous financial year of 7.70 billion rupees. Group EBITDA includes substantial pre-opening costs, 
pertaining to the ramp-up associated with the opening of the Cinnamon Life Hotel at City of Dreams, Sri Lanka, whilst the first quarter of the previous year included a deferred tax credit at the group's ports and shipping business, South Asia Gateway Terminals. The group's bunkering business, Lanka Marine Services, recorded double-digit volume growth during the quarter, although profitability was impacted due a contraction in margins on account of volatile global fuel oil prices and intensified competition from local and regional players. Both the beverages and the frozen confectionery businesses recorded an increase in EBITDA, driven by a significant growth in margins and volumes. The supermarket business recorded a strong performance during the quarter, with same-store scales recording encouraging growth of 12%, driven by customer footfall growth of 12%, resulting in growth in profitability and margins. Colombo Port's West Container Terminal, backed by India's Adani and John Keels, also expects to start operations in early 2025. Konka, a globally recognized brand known for its innovative consumer electronics products, has announced a new distribution partnership with Flickr Network, a subsidiary of Future Life Holdings. This partnership will make a wide range of Konka's products, including TVs, refrigerators, deep freezers and washing machines accessible to consumers across Sri Lanka. The official announcement was made at a grand event and press conference held at the Goldface Hotel in Sri Lanka. Flico inaugurated its first two Conquer branded showrooms at auspicious times in Maharagama and Pelavatta. The event was attended by the presence of esteemed guests, including Fiona Yu, Senior Manager of the Overseas Business Division, Reed Liu, Regional Director at Konka, and Danushka Udagama. Sanjay Jayavira and Kasun Pereira, directors of Future Life Holdings who graced the occasion representing Flico. With the unveiling of the Flico network, Sri Lankan consumers can now conveniently access a range of top-notch products, including the innovative and high-quality offerings from Konka, renowned for its technological advancements and excellent value for money. <laughs> Recognizing the significant contributions of dairy farmers to the development of Sri Lanka's dairy sector, DFCC Bank, in collaboration with the Market Oriented Dairy Project, has launched a special loyalty card program. This program provides various financial and non-financial benefits to dairy farmers offered by DFCC Bank and other partner organizations. As part of this loyalty program, selected dairy farmers will receive a special loyalty card from DFCC Bank. This card grants access to numerous benefits, including special discounts on products, development opportunities and non-financial incentives. The program partners Brown & Co. PLC, Haley's Agriculture Holdings Limited and Ginasena Private Companies will also offer attractive discounts on their dairy-related products. The market-oriented dairy project based in Sri Lanka is funded by the United States Department of Agriculture through the Food for Progress program and is implemented by Improving Economies for Stronger Communities, a non-profit organization based in Washington. The project aims to double the production of participating dairy farmers, enhance their technical knowledge and develop their entrepreneurial and business acumen, ultimately enabling them to secure higher prices for fresh milk production. The Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and the Colombo Stock Exchange signed a Memorandum of Understanding recently to establish a partnership aimed at enhancing financial literacy and professional development in Sri Lanka. This collaboration will offer ACCA courses through Colombo Stock Exchange branches, including a capital market module, co-branding and access to ACCA resources. The partnership will explore and create new pathways for students to further their education and enhance their careers in accountancy and finance through joint marketing activities at regional levels. The initiative also aims to enhance the employability of students through capacity building initiatives. Cycle Pure Incense, a company producing incense and related products, has once again received the Zero Carbon Manufacturer Certification. The official certification was presented to the company and a press conference at the Grand Imperial Hotel in Talavatagoda to inform the public about this achievement. 
Cycle Pure Incense remains the only incense manufacturing company in the country to have received the Zero Carbon Manufacturer Certification. This underscores the company's commitment to environmental protection and the sustainable future of its stakeholders. As a company, Cycle Pure Incense has significantly reduced the carbon footprint of its operations over the years by implementing innovative technologies and following environmentally friendly practices. All these efforts were considered in awarding the Zero Carbon Manufacturer Certification. They also announced plans to introduce new eco-friendly products and initiatives in the coming year, further solidifying their role as a leader in environmental stewardship. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian stocks were mostly higher today following a decision by the Bank of Japan to raise its benchmark interest rate. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 edged 0.1% lower to 38,478. 0.92 after the central bank's decision to raise the benchmark rate to about 0.25% from 0.1%. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong added 1.9% to 17,326.58 and the Shanghai Composite Indices was up by 1.8% at 2,930.80. Australia's S&P ASX 200 advanced 1.3% to 8,052.50 while in South Korea the Cosby rose 0.5% to 2,751.59. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq closed lower yesterday, weighed down by weak chip and mega cap shares ahead of earnings from heavyweight tech companies this week. But the Dow managed modest gains. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq tumbled to close lower on Tuesday, weighed down by shares of chip and mega cap companies ahead of big tech earnings this week. The Dow gained half a percent, the S&P lost the same amount, and the Nasdaq shed about 1.3 percent. Shares of Microsoft, down less than 1 percent at the close, tumbled 6 percent in after-hours trading due to weaker-than-expected revenue growth in its Azure cloud business. That business is best positioned to benefit from AI. Chipmaker NVIDIA, poster child for the promise of AI growth, closed down 7 percent. Earnings from Apple, Amazon, and Meta platforms are also due this week. Among consumer staples, Procter & Gamble tumbled more than 4.5 percent after missing fourth-quarter sales expectations. Shares of Merck plunged more than 9.5 percent after the drug maker cut its annual profit forecast. CrowdStrike also dropped more than 9.5 percent after a report that Delta Airlines sought compensation from the cybersecurity firm and Microsoft for the carrier's global cyber outage earlier this month. And the small-cap Russell 2000 index gained modestly, extending a recent rotation out of more expensive stocks as the market has solidified expectations the Federal Reserve will begin cutting interest rates in September. Investors will look for further indications of Fed policy at the conclusion of the central bank's two-day policy meeting on Wednesday. Standard Chartered revealed a $1.5 billion share buyback, its largest to date, and raised its income forecast for 2024, confident in robust economic growth in its key Asian markets and initiatives to reduce expenses. Standard Chartered, or Stanchart, announced a record $1.5 billion share buyback on Tuesday. That's after the lender's pre-tax profits climbed a forecast-beating 5% to around $3.5 billion for the first half of the year. On these results, the London-headquartered bank, which earns most of its revenue in Asia, upgraded its income outlook for 2024. It now expects more than 7% growth in operating income. This bumper buyback, Stanchart's biggest ever, coming alongside the lifted guidance, emphasises the determination of CEO Bill Winters to boost the bank's shares. They have yet to match peers' gains this year. The bank said it will also press ahead with a cost-cutting plan that seeks to save around $1.5 billion in three years. 
This includes doing away with around 100 internal apps. Asia-focused global banks like Stanchart have benefited in recent years from higher interest rates, relatively stronger economic growth and wealth generation in the region. But in China, slowing growth and a property sector crisis have troubled Western banks, with signs of recovery being limited. Despite these mixed pressures, Stanchart shares rose in London trade following the lender's rosier results. Well, that marks the end of today's Nile Business Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Have a good night.